Got some video of the kitchen set up here. It takes about two minutes to slide it out of the back of the trailer. Uh, kind of the design in mind with the kitchen was to maximize the amount of counter space. So the three bill, three burner Coleman stove slides out to the left. Uh, there's an extra kind of layer of counter space here on the top, and the sink is on the right. Uh, these plastic storage units fit just perfectly inside the kitchen when it all folds up so you've got your pots and pans and corkscrews and cutlery and all that kind of thing cups uh, the water heater attaches right here so this is an inline water heater from the two uh, 10 gallon tanks that are stored below uh, so you get hot water that comes to uh, the sink here and what we do is we just drain it into a slop bucket so that you can dispose of the water uh, depending if you're in bear country or wherever you can dump water for scent and to make sure you're not dumping it in a bad spot. Coming around to the right side of the trailer, this is the water pump. So in its default configuration it's set up to pump water to the water heater and that just quick connects on. Uh, everything is set up with a quick connect system so that you can also, you'll see the blue water uh, filter there, so that you can quickly refill your tanks from any kind of stream or if you were by a really clear lake, uh, just with quick connects, and I've got a 25 foot garden hose in the front of the trailer. So you can quick connect down there, turn those two levers, uh, attach the water filter, and pump water into the tanks um, to uh, quickly replenish them. And then you just turn those dials and quick connect it off, and then you're pumping from the tanks again. Uh, and that's a nice way if you're going for more than two or three days. Uh, but usually the 20 gallons of water on board is about 80 liters, right? So that'll handle all your washing needs uh, for certainly at least two or three days. There's also a few more switches in here to turn the water pump on and off. And there's that searchlight one here that is a uh, water, or sorry, a, another LED light tower here that telescopes up and down and you can aim it and point it around to be pointing at the kitchen and it goes up and down as well here. Uh, there's also a bit of extra storage space in there. We use that as a spice rack and a couple of things. These cabinets all lock, um, so they've got uh, locks on there so that when you're driving down the road or parking it somewhere, uh, you don't have to worry about someone uh, getting in there. Also here, I've just got my fly fishing sling hung here right now, but these gray poles, these slide out, and they've got another U-shaped pole that attaches between these two poles right here and what you can do is you can take the shower head there that is used for the sink and you just clip on a shower curtain there's another pole in the front that connects this pole to that and so this is just enough room here to clip a shower curtain on here and this gray pole right here the shower head the shower wand fits right on there and you can have yourself a nice little enclosed shower area right here as well if you've been on the road for several days. And you can do that either pumping straight out of a stream and warming the water through the filter, or you can do that pumping out of the tanks. So just slide those back in. So at the front here, I've got an area to mount uh, the max tracks. Behind the max tracks, when you uh, bolt these down, there's a secret hiding place in behind there. I just keep a uh, cast iron old Dutch oven stove in there and charcoal briquettes but uh, you can keep anything you like in the secret hiding place in the front of the trailer here there is the truck box up front I've got two 20 pound propane tanks in there right now uh, the propane tank on the left you can see there's two devices attached to it one's the water heater one is the Coleman three burner stove the other 20 pound tank I've got is running back through the vestibule there to our propane fridge that I take in and out each night, again for bears, but um, you can keep it running if you're not in bear country. Uh, the stickers included, all the fun places we've gone with this adventure trailer. Moab, Zion, Yellowstone, uh, Grand Tetons, uh, a, lot of, a lot of great places on this trailer. So there's a 1500 pound winch on the front as well just for leveling and uh, your leveling lights, all that kind of thing. The original Land Cruiser uh, fuel tank that is uh, still on here. And this is a picture here, this is a video of the, kind of the entire tent set up. 
with the optional vestibule included. So the optional vestibule retails for about 300 bucks, but it is a really nice area to either use as a changing room or use it as a changing room and, and zip up that back area if you do want to keep the mosquitoes out. I keep it open is because as you can see there the uh, the electrical cabinet is nice to be able to access while you're camping. You can see a couple red glows there. I'll take you through that electrical panel once the vestibule's off and we get a little bit more light back here. Um, but we use it for, for changing or if you wanted to, you could have uh, somebody sleep in here. Uh, or it's great for the dog, that kind of thing. So the cabinets are lit, so I just hit one of the buttons on the old control panel there. So here's a deep cycle battery. Uh, I don't know the reserve capacity off the top of my head right now, but I'll include that in the description. As you can see on the left hand side, we've got all kinds of 12 volt chargers, uh, USB chargers, includes things like traditional iPod, lightning charger, micro USB, uh, conventional USB, um, it's also got some extending 12 volt cables. Uh, the solar panels plug in right here as well. These are called MC4 clips, so the solar panel is running right now. And as you can see right here, the solar charger is going. Um, and the 100 watt solar panel does a great job of keeping this up. This is a really well designed solar charger. It does an extra job of conditioning the battery over time, never overcharges it or undercharges it. It's basically a trickle charger uh, with your solar panel, so it can charge at up to 8-9 amps, no problem when the, when the solar is really going, uh, but it'll also do a really good job of conditioning that last 3 or 4% on the battery to properly charge it. Then there's switches here for the interior cabinet lights. The dome lights are the LED lights that are installed inside the tent. And the third switch there is to turn on the electricity to the other cabinet, to the water pump, and to that uh, telescoping light on the other side.